Well, good morning, everyone. It is Thursday, March the 25th, and this is Pastor Bramick, and I'm here today for your daily devotions. We're in the Gospel of Mark this morning, uh, doing Mark chapter 15, and we're starting at verse uh, 16. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole battalion, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put, they put it on him, and they began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews! And they were striking his head with a reed, and spitting on him, and kneeling down in homage to him. And when they mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, and put his own clothes on him, and they led him out to crucify him. And they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. And the inscription on the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left, and those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests and the scribes mocked him to one another, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. But the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. So we're, we're at the moment now of, of Good Friday and Jesus is being crucified. And there's a number of things that Mark brings out here uh, in the story uh, from uh, the mocking of Jesus and the invitation for him to come down. And if he does, then we'll believe in him, you know, so that they couldn't have conceived of a king who would die for, for sin. They only could conceive of a king who could do miracles and who could overcome um, their injustices to him in that moment. Uh, the other thing here, Jesus has offered some wine mixed with myrrh. Some people may think, and I, I'd have to go back and look this up about myrrh, whether it does this or not. Uh, I know it has uh, antiseptic properties, but I can't remember if it has analgesic properties. Uh, and so that maybe uh, wine mixed with myrrh might be some kind of a mild analgesic to lessen the pain of the crucifixion. Uh, you know, the Romans here showing their little bit of mercy in some way. Um, but, uh, you know, we have that, but you have this constant refrain here through these passages that Jesus is being crucified as the King of the Jews. And the Romans were also in some ways trying to send a message to the Jewish people, uh, that, uh, you know, this is your King. And if you revolt, then you'll be treated like him. So you better not uh, start anything. So it, in some ways it was, it was a Roman way of trying to scare or to intimidate uh, those who were in town for the Passover who were also seeing this, because in some other Gospels, uh, the uh, religious leaders didn't want that sign put up. They didn't, want, they didn't want a sign that said, this is the king of the Jews, but that this man said he was the king of the Jews, and Pilate, Pilate wouldn't budge on that. Uh, but, you know, they have a lot of ironic comments here. He saved others, let him save himself, but exactly that's, that's why Jesus is being crucified, so that he won't save himself. And in this way, his death will count for, for all of us. So uh, all these invitations here, and then, and then Jesus is uh, obviously about to die here at the sixth hour. And that's what's going to happen. And so we'll continue to hear about this as we uh, approach Palm Sunday here in the church calendar. So hope you can join us this coming Sunday, and then, of course, uh, next week for Holy Week. All right, let's pray together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Everyone, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you, give you his peace. Amen. Okay, a few announcements to make. 
Uh, I believe there is grief share tonight at its usual time. You can check the email newsletter to learn some more about that. Uh, this coming Saturday is a, it's an important church work day. We're trying to get the church ready for uh, for Easter. As you know, we had a, a pretty big hailstorm last night, so we had a lot of the um, plants and things around the church that were affected. So we could really use your help on Saturday getting those uh, uh, all situated. I know there's going to be some new things to plant, um, some weeding that needs to be done, some things around the church. So Tim Beliefnik is heading this up, and he's... Um, God, he will have a task uh, ready for you with uh, with whatever your needs are or your skill set. So uh, please kind of try and be up here eight eight thirty. Uh, things should be in in full swing. Um, Holy Week services start this coming Sunday with Palm Sunday. Uh, now a week from this Saturday, we have our Holy Saturday prayer vigil. We only have about five names signed up on there, so this is the fewest names so far that we've ever had. Um, we probably have about uh, 15, 20 slots, I think, for the day. So uh, if you come to church on this Sunday, uh, please go ahead and sign up for a 30-minute time slot. I'd love to see the sanctuary filled um, all day long. And, uh, you know, it's always important to pray and, and to remember your Lord and uh, come up here into the sanctuary and, and um, take some time to do that. So we hope you can see, we, we can see you a week from Saturday. Um, that's all the announcements I have for right now. Elizabeth will be here tomorrow for your daily devotions. I wish you God's blessings on this, uh, the rest of your Thursday. God bless.